So I've been getting a lot of use out of my server lately. I've been trying a lot of different apps and I've been recently trying to find an app that allows me to check in on a bunch of my apps really easily in a much nicer layout than the Unraid one, especially on mobile when I'm not home. It'd be really nice to be able to just check on the health of everything, make sure that all of the apps are running properly and even get a little bit of details and statistics on those. I actually ended up finding a really cool dashboard app that allows me to do that. It works really nicely. I've only got it set up for about a week or so now, um, but it's been a lot of fun and I thought we'd go over it together today. The app we're going to be talking about today is called Homar. It has some really cool integrations. If stuff is set up locally on the local network, it doesn't have to be on the same machine, but if it's on the local network, it makes it even easier to set up. If it's on the same machine, it makes it even easier on top of that. Um, and I'm going to go through what it takes to set it up. Very simple. I really like how everything can be done in the GUI. Um, we're going to go through setting up a few things, setting up some apps, setting up some widgets. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to show you my layout that I have currently right now. I actually kind of based my layout on another YouTuber tech hut. I believe I was watching his video about this a couple of weeks ago, decided to dive into it and look at it myself. And that's what's gotten me kind of playing around with it recently. So as you can see here, I already have the app installed, but I will show you how to get it. We just go to the apps here, wait for the store to load, and you're just going to search Homar. It should be the only one. And you would just go ahead and install from here. I didn't change any of the default settings. Everything that I have is the default. Um, so we can take a look at that now. I left everything as it was, didn't make any changes and I haven't run into any issues with that. So just go ahead, hit your apply when you're going ahead and installing, get it installed. Once that's done, you can go ahead and hop into the web UI. So this is what my dashboard looks like. It is set up really nicely. I'm really happy with it so far. There are gonna be more changes to it. I just recently got the home assistant stuff set up on here. I've added one singular entity. I have a lot more work that I have to do in Home Assistant first, I got to add a bunch more entities first. So this is going to change quite a bit once I get that done. I'm having some issues with the Plex app recognizing that it's online and that it's working. If I go ahead and click it here, it will bring me to Plex no problem. So that's not an issue. It's just the little status ping here is saying that it's unrecognized. I have to look into that. But overall, I'm really happy with this layout. We'll go over it a little bit in more detail in a bit. But what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and start off with the default dashboard. I left that one as is so that I could go through this. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to manage, I'm gonna go to boards and we're gonna go to the default board. So this is what the board is going to look like when you first go ahead and set up. And as you can see here, we have a few things. We have the weather, um, we have their contribute, discord, donate, some time, documentation. We have a little notepad thing here. We can edit this notepad if we want. But we're going to go ahead and edit the dashboard. And the first thing that most people will probably end up doing is when you enter edit mode, you can just go ahead and delete these and you can get rid of all the ones that you don't care about. So let's get rid of some of these. And the really nice thing about this UI is that you can resize things really quickly and really easily within the UI. You can make them as big or as small as you want. Um, I really do like that. It allows for a lot of organization. There are some settings here, so we can actually enable sidebars as well. So I have the sidebar enabled on mine, so I like that. I have the pings also enabled on mine, so that allows me to see apps that are online and offline. You can go ahead and you can change your page title. So that would be right here. Um, you can go ahead and change what it says on your browser tab as well, so that's cool. You can end up changing your logo, which I've done, and I'll go ahead and show you guys what that looks like when we switch over to mine. You can change a whole bunch of the colors. You can even do custom CSS and change the grid stacking as well. So we're gonna go ahead and save that change to add the sidebar in here. And we're gonna go ahead and put the weather into the sidebar. Let's resize that, make it nice and big. There we go. I didn't save the changes before, so they're all back. So let's go ahead and get rid of these. We're gonna go ahead and just exit and save just so that we're starting from scratch. All right, so let's go ahead and add our first app. Now there's multiple ways to add an app. If Omar is installed on the same system as a bunch of your other Docker apps, you can go ahead and hit Docker up here and it'll show all of the other apps that it's able to recognize on the system. 
and it'll tell you if they're running or not. Now, I've been noticing a few issues with adding things from here. You aren't able to get some of the automation that happens, which is really weird, and I'll go about that in a second. But if you wanted to, you can go ahead and just select one of these, add it to Homar, and it'll go ahead and add it here. You can start and stop them from there as well. So you can just start and stop any of your apps if you want, which is kind of cool. But the other way you can add an app is you go into edit mode. We're gonna add a tile and we're gonna add an app. So the first app I'm gonna add, let's go ahead and do my Qubit Torrent, for example. Now you would go ahead and put your username and password for Qubit Torrent. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab Qubit Torrent here. We're gonna go to general. We're gonna paste that into our app name. And then it's gonna automatically grab the image. Now, this is one of the things that doesn't seem to happen when you do it from the Docker ad. It doesn't seem to re-grab an image when you change the name. So not sure what's going on with that. Now we need our internal and external IP. So we're just gonna go ahead and get it from here. I can slap that there, slap that there. And then the behavior, we're gonna leave it as is. It would open up a new tab. Network, we're gonna leave as is. And the appearance, we're gonna leave as is. If you don't like this icon that shows up, you can go ahead and search for one. So I can do Qubit, I can look at another Qubit Torrent icon and change it up if you want to. You can do whatever you'd like. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the default one. And there we go. It is able to see the app here and sometimes it takes a refresh for it to realize and now it re realizes that it's online and we're good to go. Now from here, we can also add some widgets that use Qubit Torrent. So if we go to the widgets here, there are tons of widgets. They're, they seem to be adding more as time goes on. It'd be nice to see more of them come online. Um, but we can go ahead and we can add one that will show any of the torrents that are on our Cuba torrent. And as you can see here, I have a whole bunch of torrents available. Um, you can change what it's showing. So you can choose to only show, you know, let's say we only want it to show the progress. We don't care to show completed torrents. We only want active torrents. You can do a whole bunch of filtering here. And there you go. You'd be able to kind of limit what you're seeing here. This is all, of course, completely legally grabbing movies and stuff from other stuff, of course. We only do things legally here. Um, but that's a way to add a, a widget. There's a bunch of widgets that are not directly attached to other applications, things like date and time you can add without um, a Docker app existing. You can do iframes, you can do a whole bunch of really cool stuff. And I'll go through it in a little bit more detail when we go back to uh, my dashboard and I'll show you which ones I have and all the setups that are all there. So another thing that we can add is we can add categories. So we can go ahead and go to categories here. We're gonna call this one media and we're gonna try to get our app in here. It doesn't seem to always work very nicely. I wish there was a better way for this UI to work. Stop running away from me, please. All right, so we were able to sneak the app on there. Um, again, I do wish there was a better way to add things into those without them shifting all over the place. I'll talk about some complaints about the UI shifting around a, a bit later as well, but we can have a category here. Unfortunately, categories themselves cannot be moved. You can add multiple categories. So let's add a second one and you can shift their organization to be up and down but you can't actually physically move them, make them smaller, do anything like that, which is kind of unfortunate. You do have limited options as to what you can do. Um, and it'd be nice to be able to actually move these categories around. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that there are three sizes of dashboard. There's large, medium, and small. The large is gonna be what you typically have when you're full screen on a desktop. The medium would be something like if you were split screen on a desktop like this. And the small would be something where it's extremely narrow to the point where you're on basically a mobile phone and you'll see that because the sidebar goes away. This becomes pretty important because unfortunately, the way that you lay out things in one size does not apply to all the other sizes. So every single time you make an adjustment to your dashboard on one size, you have to make sure you make that adjustment to the other sizes. This took me a while on mine and I'll show you what all three of mine look like but it is a little bit of a pain in the butt there. So keep that in mind. So with all that said, let's go ahead and go back to my dashboard. 
and we can go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So here I have the time up in the top left. As I mentioned, I have my logo up here. I've changed the name. Um, I've got the local weather. I've got my current download speeds, which is nice. Um, we have all of my recent requests within Overseer all here, which is cool. Um, we have all of my active torrents that are available right here. We have my pie hole so I can um, set a timer and disable my pie hole for a little bit. I can do a whole pause, everything like that. I can see my pie hole stats, which is also cool. I have a, a home assistant entity showing here, which is my house temperature. So that's nice. I'm able to see any active streams going on on either Jellyfin or Plex, which is great as well. I'm able to see the health of all of my indexers that I use for all of my legal stuff for sure. Um, I'm able to see the release schedules. Sometimes this doesn't populate all that well. Um, if I go ahead and change it up, there we go. Uh, once you leave the, the save, it'll go ahead and it'll tell you when certain things are releasing. So if I click on the 12 here, it's gonna say, hey, a new episode of Bookie is coming out on the, came out on the 12th. So it's gonna download. And if we go to something like in the future on Boxing Day, another episode of Bookie is coming out. So that's cool. It'll go ahead and show you your release schedule. This is also related to Overseer. This is just showing all of the approvals. So this will show me any pending approvals, TV requests, movie requests, already approved total, and my requests. It doesn't include my requests in this. It only includes all of the additional users, not the admin. Now I mentioned the multiple sizes. So if we go ahead and I go ahead and make this half screen, I have it so that everything's still stacked pretty nicely and everything still looks pretty good. And then if I make this even smaller to the mobile view, everything's still stacked nice, everything's spaced out. Again, this did take a lot of time and I'm actually gonna show you why this was important to me because as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, being able to access this on mobile is one of the main reasons I wanted a dashboard. Now, as you can see here, I have this set up on my mobile. So we have all of our apps here, just like we do on desktop. I'm able to see my stuff from Piehole, which is nice. I can see my approvals from Overseer, um, see all of the rest of my stuff. Everything's laid out very similar to how it is in that small view that I was showing on the desktop. We have our sidebar here. We can go ahead and take a look at everything. So everything works really, really well. I'm This is my main use for this right now. Um, I really do like it. It allows me to check in on things when I'm down visiting my parents, which is a few hours away. It just is a lot better than using the native Unraid GUI. Take a look at the apps. And it is nice that I can look at stats and stuff for other things as well. Someone mentions that, that Plex is getting a little bit slow. I can go ahead and check out here. Um, whole bunch of other reasons. I really like it so far. And if you really want to, you can go ahead and use that video that I showed uh, a couple weeks ago where you can go ahead and push this to a domain that you own uh, using Cloudflare Tunnel. You can go ahead and access it even easier um, and you can access it externally without having to use a VPN into your house, which is what I'm using. Makes it really easy as well. And overall, I'm pretty happy with it. So now let's talk about some things that I don't like about the dashboard and some of my grievances that maybe they can get changed. Um, the first one is gonna be that when you add something, you don't get to choose where it goes. If it's a widget, it's almost always gonna be in the top left-hand corner. If it's something small, like for example, a home assistant entity, not a big deal. It doesn't take up a ton of space and it doesn't mess up my whole layout that too much. But if it's something larger, like let's say the Usenet, that goes ahead and shifts down a whole bunch of apps and it messes up my layout. So if I go to the half, now I have all this empty space. Everything's kind of shifted all over the place. And then if I go to the smaller layout, I have all this empty space. Everything's kind of shifted out of order and it's a bit of a pain. Now what compounds this pain and makes it a little bit worse is if I go ahead and try to move this and if I go ahead and move this over here, it is just pushing everything down. It is not filling the space that I'm I'm opening by moving that app down. It just pushes everything down. And then if I go ahead and move this back, it doesn't pull anything back up. So everything can get messed up and your whole layout can be messed up just by trying to add something to your dashboard. So it's a little bit of a pain. What this has kind of pushed into me as when I'm trying to do all this stuff 
is that I make sure that I save my layouts as much as possible whenever I do something. So every time I'm in edit mode and I go ahead and I move something, I exit and save it like immediately just so that I don't accidentally mess it all up because there's no real undo. It's just gonna undo everything from your last save. So bit of a pain in the butt there. And honestly, that's it. Homar is very easy to set up. It's very easy to do the initial process. It can take some time to get a layout that you like that works out for you. Um, and I really hope that some of these grievances that I have will be fixed in the future. It would be great if they do fix those. It would be an almost perfect app. I'd be super happy with it. Um, but what I'm really curious about is if you guys are using any dashboards, if you're using any dashboards for Unraid specifically, I'd really like to know about it. If you're interested in any dashboards for Unraid, but you haven't taken the dive, I'd be interested in those as well. I'm happy to learn about new things. I'm happy to try them. If you're like, hey, it's this is a little bit intimidating. Would you mind trying it out, taking a look at it for me? More than happy to. Let me know, let me know down in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to check out more dashboard options. Again, it being able to work on mobile and it being able to scale on mobile is really important for me because that's what I'm mainly gonna be using this for. But this has been nice to play around with. It's been nice to tinker with. Um, it looks pretty as well, which I really, really like. And yeah, with all that said, I really do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can also leave those down in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them all as quickly as I can. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors and big thanks to you for watching to the end of this video. If you wanna see any other videos relating to my server, set up, unraid, all that kind of stuff, you can check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there.